Meanwhile, a corpse has been found by the river in North Algonquin. And like a couple of other recent murder victims, the corpse has been beheaded and desecrated, prompting some cops to think the unthinkable. We may have a serial killer on the loose in Liberty City for the first time in years. Although detectives appeal for calm and said nothing is clear yet, they are requesting joggers and late-night walkers to be especially careful. We will stay with the story and try to get people really hysterical. Liberty City this. remains under siege as another body was found, this time at the Liberty Ferry Terminal in Alderney City. A decapitated jogger who was getting fit in the wrong place at the wrong time. Detective John Atkinson has been working the case. Oh, thank God he did it again. I was beginning to lose my media profile. In Grand Theft Auto 4, Liberty City is a place of endless possibility. With a population numbering in the millions, it's no surprise to see the best and, more often, the worst of society at play. Among an endless supply of people, the most depraved and twisted have their pick of victims. And in today's video, we're going to explore GTA 4's most disturbing example. For a monster stalks these streets, always ahead of the law with methods so baffling the police and press struggle to even name him, with an unknown number of victims. In today's video, we're going to be exploring the lore around this otherwise seemingly negligible bit of side content. And though I'm a good 16 years late to this being fresh content, this sort of stuff is my bread and butter. So let's have some fun. This is the story of Grand Theft Auto 4's serial killer, Eddie Lowe. Now there's a considerable time frame between beginning Nico Bellic's story and encountering this serial murderer. So chances are the first you'll hear of these foul goings on in Liberty City might be over the radio, or perhaps while browsing the internet in a twat cafe. You know what, that's a pretty fitting name. In the magical web world, one can find many things. From social media to online shopping, all the way to ethically questionable, explicit content. And of course, there are also various news outlets. Over the course of the game, Liberty Tree has various articles covering a series of murders. The first is titled Serial Killer on Loose. Penned by a man named Michael Wayne, it reads as follows. It's the reality nobody wants to face up to. It's the stuff of nightmares. Police have admitted they are concerned about similarities in a series of murder cases over the past few years, making them think a serial killer may be at work in Liberty City. The killer, who's yet to be given a nickname, seems to have a particular thing against keep fit enthusiasts, as the three victims so far were joggers. Each had been decapitated after running late at night, it seems we are in for a news bonanza as we consider the ramifications of this terrifying case in gruesome detail and try to figure out exactly who will star in the movie. In the meantime, police strongly recommend people pay more taxes and push for a rise in both overtime benefits and basic pay. It's a long time since this city had a proper serial killer and we think this is going to get worse before it gets better. Detective Squad Chief John Atkinson said, I'm going to be getting my name in the papers a lot if this guy turns out to be a serial killer, so I've got to make sure I don't say or do anything stupid. We strongly recommend people don't go out, and if they do, carry a cell phone or a policeman with them at all times. The most important thing though, is that people don't panic more than is strictly necessary we will keep you posted. So this gives us some key information to get us going. It seems as if there's a guy out there who quite likes decapitating joggers, and he appears to have been operating within Liberty City for at least a few years. And though we don't entirely know how many people he has killed, we know that three of them were joggers. With murder being a hardly unheard of occurrence within Liberty City, there's a better than good chance there would be more victims that are yet to be counted or even considered as relevant. Maybe the circumstances of those deaths don't correlate, or maybe the bodies simply haven't been discovered yet. For now though, as the main story progresses, more articles can be read. Like this one, titled Serial Killer Leaves Note But No Clues, written by Tony J. Smith. And it reads, Police are baffled as the killer without a nickname strikes again. That's right, another body has been found this time with a handwritten note. The city is in panic. 
but still the police have no clues or leads as to who is beheading joggers and walkers and leaving their bodies in the bushes all over town. This time it was a young dance instructor from Broker who had his head removed, but police are struggling to see a pattern or get any traction on the case. Detective John Atkinson, who is covering the case, said, To be honest, it's down to underfunding. Unless the police force are given better overtime and better pensions, there's no way this guy can be caught. But I want everyone to know, I will be writing a book about this case, and anyone trying to beat me to market will be sued if they mention my name. It's a tragedy. When asked about how he would respond to the ongoing naming crisis that bedevils this case, he said, It's awful. These people have died in vain and my marketing campaign is in tatters. This lets us know the killer is still active, present in Liberty City. He hasn't left, he's still here, hunting. But the main takeaway from this article in particular is the police attitude towards catching the killer. The lead detective on the case, John Atkinson, seems far more involved with his own image and the fame that being the lead detective on a serial killer case might grant him and also rather ridiculously claims that catching this murderer is entirely unlikely unless the police get paid more. In other words, as far as bringing this monster to justice is concerned, the Liberty City Police Department have simply declared themselves impotent. It suggests it won't be them who puts a stop to this lunatic, but we'll get to that later. For now, there's one more news article to acknowledge, titled This Time It's Legs, Not Heads. Are fingers, knees and toes next? 10 out of 10 for being tasteful, I'll give it that. Liberty City serial killer struck again yesterday with the news that the body of a man had been recovered who'd had his limbs and genitals removed. This time, however, unlike other victims, the head remained intact. The victim was a white male, although police have not yet released a name. This change in strategy makes the already fraught task of naming the serial killer much more difficult. Police are baffled by this dangerous turn of events, while the city lives in dread. One Duke's resident noted, What does it say about our police department that they can't even name a serial killer? What must the Midwest think of us now? It's pathetic. The police chief should be beheaded, never mind these poor victims. The running joke is obviously that the media and authorities are more interested in giving this murderer a cool nickname so they can collectively capitalise on the media frenzy. And there's no real serious discussion regarding going about catching the killer. Well, the good news is they won't have to. Because once you've unlocked all of the islands on the map, there is a particular character encounter that can be had here on Alderney during the in-game late night, specifically between the hours of 10pm and 3am, I want to say. You'll know as you approach as to whether or not it's spawned, and it should be marked on your map anyway, and the encounter will be a dodgy looking bloke with a bag standing at the mouth of a back street. Hey there, pal. Hey. Hey. Hey, what are you doing out here so late? What's it to you? Nothing. Just trying to make conversation. Just trying to keep the loneliness at bay. You know. Whatever you say. Hey, uh, you're not from around here, are you? No, I'm from Florida. <laughs> you're funny. You're a real joker. I knew a joker once. Lovely guy. Came to a rather unfortunate end, though. But I suppose we all do. In the end. Okay. Wait, 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 mister. Um, do you ever wonder, do you ever wonder if animals, they masturbate? Okay, listen, friend, you're really creeping me out. No, it's a silly question. I know, silly question. It's just I was wondering because maybe that's what makes us different uh, from the animals. I mean, masturbating. Because it turns out we don't have souls and animals use tools and all that kind of thing. So maybe it's the masturbating. Maybe that's God's real gift to us. Okay, I'd really like to get back to planet Earth, so maybe I'll see No, you wait, later. wait a minute, mister. I'm sorry. I'm strange. I'm a weird guy. I know. <laughs> Hey, hey, do you have a car? Can you get one? Why? Because I have this rather heavy bag, and I really need a lift. I can pay you. <sighs> okay, okay. Thanks. I'm Eddie, by the way. Eddie Lowe. Yes, yeah. fine. Come on. Our first interaction with our new friend, Eddie Lowe, is particularly interesting. 
He strikes up a conversation with Nico, seemingly for little reason, rapidly grows not just erratic and nonsensical, but also disturbing. Eddie Lowe does admit that he's a little weird, but I don't think that quite covers it. But aside from his alarming rambles, he requests Nico give him a lift, on account of his rather heavy bag, to which Nico, albeit reluctantly, obliges. We get an objective to take Eddie to the docks, and the rambling continues. You got the ship to catch. You going somewhere? I'm not going anywhere. My friends are, though. They're heading off. <laughs> That's a funny joke. Joke? Joke? Eddie never jokes. Eddie needs to be taken seriously. They laughed at him once, but you can't laugh without a tongue. You can't point if you haven't got fingers, can you? That's what Daddy told me, late at night, in my room. Easy there, buddy. We're friends, aren't we? We can talk to one another, share things. Spill your guts. Ew. I don't like doing that. It's smelly. I'm kidding. Isn't the world strange and nasty? I mean, a girl looks at you, but it turns out she doesn't love you at all. It turns out she's a whore. You're kind of a strange guy, Eddie. Have you ever considered psychotherapy? You've got issues. My only issue is I don't accept the world's bullshit. The more Mr. Lowe speaks, the more you realize just how deranged he actually appears to be. But it's his comment that his friends are heading off, and then the cackle that followed as if he'd made a pun that only he was equipped to understand, that makes you wonder, What's in the bag? Wait here for me, friend. Special friend. I'm just dropping the kids off. So he goes and jankily drops the kids off, as he puts it, in the sea, and then returns to the car. Glad I got rid of that. Wouldn't want to get caught with it. People can be so narrow-minded. Can, can you take me to Westminster? Obviously, it's not hard to conclude there was a body in that bag but it's on the drive over to Westminster where things really take a turn. I like Westminster. Lots of nice boys there. It's one of my hunting grounds. Never gets you off, friend. Mm, yeah, I like boys. I like girls too. Both are fun in different ways. The same ways as well. You were all the same under those layers of hair and skin and fat. Everyone's got the same rotten livers and black hearts underneath it all. Sure. You should visit planet Earth sometime. Where are you from, pal of mine? What's your accent? Are you from uh, East Europe? Romania? Bulgaria? Balkans? Hey, you're a smart guy. Eddie's smart. Eddie's real smart. They always told him that. Eddie, you're smart. Why don't you play with the other kids? Don't touch him like that, Eddie. Stop it, Eddie. Uh, stop it. Yeah, stop it, Eddie, please. <laughs> Your accent's funny. You know that you can hear accents when people scream? I can tell what borough people are from just by hearing them scream. I've heard enough Alderney accents tonight. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> I want to hear some nice, rounded, Algonquin voices. Please stop! <laughs> Please stop it! D do you see that? You're making me a little uncomfortable, Eddie. I hope you're joking. I'm sorry, pal. Of course I'm joking. Do you think that I'm weird? Please. I'm just a no-bullshit kind of guy. So, so, what's your name? And what do you do? Huh? Those are normal questions. Nico Bellic. And I do what I can to survive, to get by. That's cryptic. Things must be difficult for you. Do you hurt other people, Nico? If they get in my way. I wouldn't want to get in your way, Nico. I wouldn't want you to get in mine either. Oh, we're good friends now, uh-huh. Special friends. Lowe talks about hearing accents in people's screams as if that's a regular part of his day-to-day -day life. He discloses that he has hunting grounds around the city, expresses disdain for other human beings, not to mention various comments suggesting a traumatic upbringing, and a strange openness as if he's not even trying to keep a secret. For the entire drive, he's rarely actually talking with Nico, but rather talking at him. 
I think it's clear he's not an individual with a decorated social life, and it's very obvious as to why. Here we are! Eddie's off to hunt for a nice boy. Thank you, Nico. Thank you, friend. I'll see you later, man-eater. And with that, the nutter has left our vehicle, and we may have just become an accomplice to a murder. Not that Nico hasn't killed more people anyway. So now we have a suspect in our search for Liberty City's nameless serial killer. It's time to venture off and do some homework on Eddie Lowe. So first things first, I quickly borrowed a police car and searched Eddie Lowe's name in the LCPD database. It is unknown where he lives, but we do discover that he's got an outstanding warrant for public lewdness. In other words, he whipped his cock out. Now, the in-game online counterpart to the LCPD database is much more expansive in its information. For example, it tells us that he's 32 years of age, he's from San Fierro, and he has a criminal record dating back to 1985 of offences like animal cruelty, exposure of a person, and public lewdness. In the notes it states that he might be a sex offender, and he's been arrested several times for exposing himself to men in parks and engaging in silly time in public. Since we have the web at our fingertips, we can dive down the deep rabbit hole of Eddie Lowe's social media accounts and so on. Firstly, he has a MyRoom account named Eddie Lowe Filth Slayer. The profile confirms his age is 32 years. It states his gender as God. His hometown is everywhere and nowhere and his relationship status is lonely. He's here for self-promotion, and his profession is street cleaner. Maybe that's an actual job, or perhaps that's how he views his hobby. Some of his likes suggest that he's a sadist. He dislikes complacency, cops, and when people take a long time to burn. Perhaps his dislike of complacency is why his modus operandi varies. His strengths are filleting, skinning, and embalming. His weaknesses are listed as none. The best physical feature in his opinion are eyes, and his drink of choice is spinal fluid. And to accompany all of that insanity, he also has a huge about me page. I don't know why I write. Maybe I like to think of you thinking about me. Do you love Eddie? Nobody does. Do you like to look at yourself in the mirror? They say if you stare for long enough, you will see the person everybody else sees. I just see Eddie. Lonely Eddie. Get away from that dog, Eddie. Don't touch grandpa like that, Eddie. But they can't catch me. I'm like a shadow. But one you can't see. But they know about Eddie. My walls are covered in news clippings and excrement. They keep trying to understand me, to get inside my head. They won't. I will get inside theirs with a hot spoon. Eddie is too smart, aren't you, Eddie? Always one step ahead. They locked Eddie up when he was little. You didn't mean to put the baby in the oven, did you, Eddie? Naughty Eddie. Cooked baby. I've never had any friends. I used to dig a hole and sit in it at recess. Do you like Eddie's pencil? Will you show me your scribe? One day, I saw a red-haired kid pissing in my hole, so I eviscerated him and hung him from the flagpole. I went to a lot of schools. Eddie wets the bed. Eddie wets the bed. You think you're so clever, Lo? Am I going to have to make you stay behind again, Lo? No, 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 no. It drones on for a bit, so I'm going to summarise from here on out. It's a monologue in which Eddie lists his exploits, if you want to put him that way. I think it's worth adding it's unclear how reliable his admissions actually are, but he talks about the people he's killed and what he did to their remains. He also alludes to being abused as a child, and apparently he even killed his own mother. And I had to summarise that before it got a tad too vulgar. In his second paragraph, he talks about how he feels no emotion and compares himself to an animal. And then he shares his views on other people, whom he sees as beneath him, infesting the world with their inferior spawn. He also shares that he takes pleasure in hurting his victims before he ends their lives, and from his perspective he's scrubbing their filth away. This is the monologue of a very disturbed man with no friends. And of course that's not the only site on which you can find traces of Eddie Lowe's presence. You can also find his presence on www.whatthedonotwantyoutoknow.com where he's made a post under the account name Eddie Lowe simply titled Fun With Friends. It reads, Liberty City is great, 
people come together here and walk around together and do things together like bowling and eating and breeding. It's nice for them to have friends and lovers and slaves. I watch them do things and sometimes I follow them back to their places and we have fun together there. Boo Boo Wilkins likes to eat lungs and hearts and eyes. She's a hungry little thing. I look after her. Getting friends together is sometimes better than going jogging by yourself. More people equals more fun. Here is where I have found people enjoying themselves together. So along with this block of text, we have a map with various green markers. Could this possibly be all the locations where he's taken lives? If that is indeed the case, and the tot up in my head that I've just done is correct, that would mean that he's killed 28 people in this city, which would certainly make him one vicious animal. It would also make sense considering one of the dots is very close by to where we actually encounter Eddie Lowe the first time, and it was rather obvious there was a dismembered corpse in his bag at the time. But this site is more player information oriented as to where to find certain things rather than lore oriented, so every map on here is largely a cheat sheet for where to find particular things. In the case of Eddie Lowe's post, it appears to be friend hangouts, according to a quick googling anyway, so it's quite possibly not reliable for much of anything, outside of what's relevant to gameplay versus what's relevant to storytelling. Anyway, the other site on which we can find a 32-year-old Eddie Lowe filth slayer is blogsnobs.org, and he updates his blog fairly regularly. It's mostly the ramblings of a madman, but we do learn that he has a cat named Boo Boo Wilkins, and he lives in Duke's Liberty City in a home that is utterly filthy. He expresses his disdain for joggers by saying, I only went for a walk by the river, mother, I promise. There's a jogger in the bushes. I hate joggers. You are given the greatest gift of all, life. And what do you do with it? Jog. Fucking narcissists. Look at me. Look at the lunge and stretch. Look at me hopping in place while I wait for the lights to change. Ooh, I'm not going to run. I'm not going to walk. I'm going to jog. Get off your fucking fence before I impale you on it. Oops, I already have. I brought the head back for Boo Boo Wilkins, but he isn't impressed. The cat has got ideas too big for its britches. I like to cut the heads off joggers to see if they keep on running like chickens. Sometimes the only difference between making love and making hate is a turn of the wrist. So tired. This confirms that Eddie Lowe kills the joggers and takes their heads to feed to his cat. To further confirm he is indeed the killer that we're looking for, he also says this, that Detective Atkinson is a moron. He'll never catch me, he can't even come up with a name for me. All he's interested in is getting his picture in the newspaper. I'm supposed to be the one getting the attention. Everybody thinks they can ignore Eddie. Well, maybe I am invisible. Maybe you can't see me. But another head is looking me straight in the eye right now. This is just the beginning, Atkinson. Complacency, apathy, indulgence. Is this what humanity has come to? Is this the civilization for which man was destined? If so, I don't want to be a part of it. The gene pool is polluted. You do not deserve life. You make me want to puke. In fact, I'm going to. That's better. I'll clean it up later. Will you, Eddie? Will you? And that is something I find fascinating. Eddie Lowe is openly admitting to being the serial killer everybody's talking about, and yet he knows that Atkinson will never read his blog. And he does that with his actual name, age, and enough information to come up with an identity on his profile. He's not actively trying to avoid arrest. If anything, he's making a point out of the LCPD being far too complacent to look. He's basically offering a full confession and nobody's there to see it, and that's the point. Maybe it's his intelligence taunting the police, or perhaps it's impulse born from a desire to be seen. But before we crack on with continuing on to our second encounter with Eddie Lowe, there's also a news article detailing a development following our aiding Eddie the first time. It reads, the serial killer who has been beheading joggers and other people foolish enough to go out late at night on their own has struck again. This time it's the same old story, a young victim found in a sports bag, no head and cops left rubbing theirs as they wonder what to call him. Detective John Atkinson, who has been on the case since the beginning, made the following statement. It is a great tragedy. People are focusing on the wrong things. Until the general public starts to focus on what matters, we don't have a chance of catching this guy. 
People are going to have to tell me, do they want the movie to be serious or have a comic twist? Should I have a love interest? What about my partner? Will he be older and wiser, but close to retirement? A man who dies in the penultimate scene, or a young punk who needs a wisecracking older guy to show him the ropes? I'm really struggling with my first draft of this screenplay, and people are just going to have to be patient. I think I actually agree with Eddie's assessment that this bloke is hopeless. Anyway, for our second encounter with Eddie Lowe, we need to head to this location in Alderney, which is not really that far from the first encounter. Again, he'll be standing rather menacingly at the mouth of a back alley, seemingly waiting. Hey there, pal! Hey! Hey! Nico, the Belkin sociopath! Eddie Lowe, the animal masturbator. <laughs> You and your wicked sense of humor. You're quite naughty. Quite, quite naughty. Whatever. Quite naughty. Do you like to get spanked like, like that? Excuse me? <laughs> no, nothing silly. I'm just being silly. Silly little Billy, that's me. <laughs> I, I like it, though. I like to get spanked. Fuck off. You're creeping me out. No, I don't want to make you angry, Nico. I don't want to be creepy. It's just my way. Well, your way is not cool. Not cool. Cool! You say Eddie's not cool? I don't fit in with the in crowd? Well, Mrs. Smith, Eddie's taken your star son, your prized little quarterback, and fucked him in the ass, and then tied him up, strangled him into knots. And your daughter? Your pretty little daughter, Mrs. Abrahams? Eddie's ripped out her intestines just to see if he could feel anything. And you know what? He couldn't. Yeah, he couldn't. You should get laid or something. Oh, I just did. A little jogger down by the water. But you know what, handsome? I got a hunger tonight that can't be sated! Come here! Huh. And with that, we must put a stop to Eddie Lowe before he can take any more lives. Run away from me. Interestingly, if you somehow disarm him, he will run away. And if you let him, you'll get an ominous, unique fail message that simply reads... Eddie Lowe is still out there, waiting. But fortunately, we put a stop to that. Weasel News. The unnamed serial killer who has plagued Liberty City for months and baffled the police department's nickname division has been found dead, himself seemingly the victim of a murder. The man who was found with several journals confessing to his crimes appears to have targeted the wrong victim and been killed in a fight. The killer's name was Eddie Lowe. Police are searching his apartment in a quiet Duke suburb for more information. Residents were angry. It's always the same thing when they catch a mass murderer. He was real quiet, they say. I say we start shooting quiet people and we won't have this problem. Loners and with that, Eddie Lowe's reign of terror is concluded, along with his life. And ironically, in death, he got the attention he desired. And with that, we get our final Liberty Tree article about him. The serial killer they couldn't name has been found dead. The killer is believed to have killed up to 10 people over the last few months, usually joggers or nighttime strollers. Police believe he attacked the wrong person and was himself killed in a fight. Detective John Atkinson told this newspaper, It is very disappointing. I was just about to make an arrest. I'd solved the case. His name was Eddie Lowe. He lived in Dukes. I was literally heading over to his house when the news came in another body had turned up. Obviously, the screenplay I am writing about the case will now have a slightly different ending in which I make the arrest, and it will carry the subtitle based on true events because that will make a better story. The mayor commented, this is not the LCPD's finest hour. We have a killer on the loose for months and no leads. Then they give him this stupid nickname, Eddie Lowe. What kind of a nickname is that? Heads will roll for this. Oh, bad joke. I mean, people will suffer. Eddie Lowe was the killer's actual name. He was a loner from Dukes, who apparently kept an account of his actions online here and on the popular networking site, My Room. I think it's fair to say that Atkinson is covering his own back there above all else, as I can guarantee he was nowhere near making an arrest. As for Eddie Lowe, while that is the conclusion to his story, there are some other bases to cover, so let's do that. Firstly, his character is an amalgamation of practically every serial murderer stereotype out there. A 30-something year old white male with an abusive upbringing, 
who references setting fires and wetting the bed and also has a charge against him for animal cruelty back in the 1980s. He appears to kill on impulse with an ability to alter his modus operandi and is wholly asocial. He also has sexual tendencies that would be considered socially unacceptable even before you considered the killing of people. He also views others as inferior to himself and is also incredibly reckless, with his inability to control his impulses ultimately causing his demise. As for the motive behind the killings, well, all of them really. He takes sadistic pleasure out of it but also craves infamy. His nature is both a product of his traumatic childhood and his blatant inability to feel. If you had to come up with a stereotypical picture of a serial murderer in your head, you really wouldn't go far wrong with Eddie Lowe. Away from that, his name appears to be referenced with another serial killer in a Rockstar game, Edmund Lowry Jr. in Red Dead Redemption 2. It's unclear to what extent that grants low significance, but it's worth mentioning. It's probably also worth mentioning correlations between Eddie Lowe in Grand Theft Auto 4 and Merle Abrams, the Infinity Killer, in Grand Theft Auto 5. Merle Abrams was the suspected Infinity Killer who killed single young men who were out jogging, which were also a prime target for Eddie Lowe. Eddie Lowe's place of birth in GTA 4 is also listed as San Fierro, which is the GTA universe equivalent to San Francisco, meaning that Lowe is originally from the state of San Andreas. Furthermore, Abrams was never outright confirmed to be the Infinity Killer, and only had circumstantial evidence linking Mr. Abrams to the victims. However, he was awaiting trial for abduction and torture, and admitted to a strange obsession with the number 8. I suppose the circulating theory is that Merle Abrams was never the Infinity Killer, and based on the correlations, he was in fact a fall guy for Eddie Lowe. And there's some dialogue from Eddie Lowe that makes it more convincing. Your pretty little daughter, Mrs. Abrahams? And he's ripped out her intestines just to see if he could feel anything. And you know what? He couldn't. Yeah, he couldn't. I know I'm glossing over this one and therefore not really doing it justice to that degree, but that's mainly because I don't really buy it. Allow me to explain. Though I'm the first to say there's no such thing as a coincidence in a game that's been crafted deliberately, I can't imagine Abrahams being a one-off surname. And though the theory goes that Eddie Lowe used Merle Abrahams' daughter as leverage to get him to take the fall for his own crimes, there's nothing in GTA 5 to suggest that Merle Abrahams had a daughter. And though I 100% agree that there's enough in the Infinity Killers sort of mystery to cast doubt on Merle Abrahams being the actual killer, Eddie Lowe is just far too erratic, impulsive and reckless, not to mention not mentally capable enough to elaborately position a patsy to take the fall for his crimes when he a wants to be known for them and b can't really control his urge to kill. If he possessed that level of rationale, he wouldn't have attacked Nico Bellic, which cost him his life. That said, you could possibly make a case for it making geographical sense, as Eddie Lowe is originally from somewhere in San Andreas, and though I'm imagining San Andreas' size is comparable to real life California, it's a logical train of thought until you realise that would give you an area twice the size of the British Isles. And if by that logic you assume the distance between San Fierro and Los Santos was the same as the distance between San Francisco and Los Angeles, the closest Eddie Lowe would have gotten to the Infinity Killer's hunting grounds that we know of is the best part of 400 miles away. And that's a lot of room for potentially other nutters being involved. And if there's one thing the GTA universe doesn't lack, it's nutters. Though in 1999 when the Infinity Killings took place, Eddie Lowe would have been in his early 20s. And you could take that one of two ways really. Maybe in his younger age he was more mentally capable and able to manoeuvre somebody to take the fall for his actions and he descended further and further into psychosis as the years went on. Or you could look at it from the perspective of if he wasn't capable of that at 32 then why would he be able to do that at 23? As you'd expect a pattern of behaviour to escalate rather than devolve. Simply put though there are clear similarities between the modus operandi of the Infinity Killer and Eddie Lowe, they aren't concrete. I also don't suspect that Lowe was capable of setting somebody up like that. That said, I don't think that theory is poorly developed at all. I think it's quite a good theory. I just don't buy it. But I do feel as if there's somebody at Rockstar Games who really has something against joggers. But I'll conclude this video by talking about what I perceive the point to be behind Eddie Lowe's character. He represents society's obsession with serial killers. And this is suggested by the news articles in which it's clear the police are more interested in giving Eddie Lowe a cool nickname rather than actually apprehending him before he can take more innocent lives. 
Eddie Lowe takes on so many stereotypes under that umbrella as well, and that is a nod to the desire to understand that incomprehensible evil. Meanwhile, Nico's interactions with Eddie Lowe show us his true nature. He's simply a pathetic madman, one who doesn't put anywhere near as much thought into his own actions as we might do when observing him. So maybe Eddie Lowe is part of a commentary on people's morbid fascinations, specifically when it comes to things that should disgust us. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's a jogger murdering maniac in GTA 6 either. Anyway, I must now wrap up this video as it's officially dragged on for simply far, far too long. Thank you all for watching this deep dive, if you will. It's the type of content that I really enjoy making. Hopefully I've done this 16-year-old topic some justice, and I also hope you've enjoyed it. I plan to do some more videos like this on various topics to do with the Grand Theft Auto games in anticipation for Grand Theft Auto 6, which is still a good year and a bit away, I imagine. So be sure to use the comment section to let me know what you'd like to see me cover. But be sure to go ahead and leave a like, maybe hit subscribe if you want to, share the channel with your friends if you want to do that, and all that wonderful stuff. And with any luck, I'll be seeing you all very soon with another video at some point. But until next time, please take care and goodbye.